It is Friday, March 15th, 2024. I'm producer Alex. I'm Jules. And I'm Owen. And I'm Callie. And this is a very special edition of Studio 595. 595. 595. Yeah. To Studio 595, we have a very special returning guest, and one could say a returning co-host uh, to the show. Welcome back, Callie. Hi! Uh, from season one, and this is uh, super exciting. We are here celebrating Women's History Month, and so I Women. thought, why not bring in the first and so far to this date only, only female co-host on Studio 595, Callie, uh, Hi. how are you doing since the last time we saw you in May of 2023? I'm doing good. It has been a very long time. It's almost been a year since I've been on the pod. Um, I'm still a woman. Uh, and I, <laughs> I, <laughs> so that awesome. is good for the sake of this keep, episode. Keep this week mm-hmm. going. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing awesome. It's really good to be here. Um, it has been about 10 months and... I remember when we did the Women's History uh, episode last year, you naturally played a large part in organizing that, (laughs) uh, having multiple guests quoted for the episode, which now we finally have you on. Well, you did, you were on video like once or twice during season one, but now you're actually on video. Yes. Can I I make the point that Alex didn't tell us this was happening until today? Oh. He, he surprised I, me. He goes, I, who's coming? I today? had been, I had mentioned That's to you guys, do things. bringing in Callie like, for like, this episode. No, I but don't like nothing, this being... nothing had been finalized yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd like you guys to know, I've known for like a week or two. Yeah. Okay, Alex, this is this already point of contention is that Alex has been withholding information from us. Alex keeps this on our toes. He where, keeps this on our where's, toes. Where's Callie? I think, I. Didn't write Callie. Okay, that's on me. Uh, on our board, on, the on our board of uh, guests planned for the it's semester like uh, for Women's History Month, I had written down uh, two professors that I had had um, yeah. during my time at, at UGA, and one of them will be featured in this episode. What? Um, Yay! And. Um, I had forgotten to write down Callie because I did have Callie like kind of planned out for for this episode in particular, but I agree that I had not mentioned it to you both. Um, I think I had mentioned it in passing, but I never said anything official. Okay, okay, fair enough. So, all right, all right, continue, continue. So, make that point. Uh, to celebrate Women's uh, History Month, we obviously brought Callie on. Um, Callie. As someone that has gone beyond the confines of CCSD now, um, is there any advice you would like to give any female students here at CCSD now that you have graduated? Which, by the way, in case if you didn't know, Kelly graduated uh, after the last episode that she was on. I did not get held back. I did actually pass all of my classes, and I am officially a graduate of this school district, so... Yeah, we're grateful for that. (laughs) They did spell my name wrong on my diploma, though. Really? And they said it wrong at graduation, so if the person who did that is listening, shame on you. Do you get a new diploma? Huh? Do you get a new diploma for that? No, they won't make me a new one. So you're stuck? Oh. Did that cause, like, legal issues? I don't know, but it's forever stuck as K-A-L-I, Samultanos. Oh, I forgot the other L. Yeah, and the rest of my name. My name is Calliope. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) It sure is. (laughs) <laughs> um, if you don't take that many L's. <laughs> yes. Oh, snap. You, t- you, 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 oh, you snap. took my line. I couldn't get it off. <laughs> <laughs> you you, um, you got it. You go, you're good today. You're on fire. In terms of advice, I think that the number one thing I could say is maybe don't try to make a plan. Um, plans, 90% of the time, fall through. The, uh, you can say you have a plan for your life. You could say you have things you want to do, places you want to go, people you want to be with. At the end of the day, you know, you really just have to roll with the punches and roll with the cards that you're given. And that's unfortunate some of the times, but a lot of the time it can make a really beautiful story uh, when you look back and reflect on your life. So uh, there's a lot of people out there who want to be something in particular. 
um, and they're dead set on going and going to school for that and I'm going to a four year college and I'm doing this, let go of your plans a little bit, you know. I say let God take control and just move forward and, you know, allow for your life to fall in place around you, you know. You will end up exactly where you're supposed to end up. And I think too many high schoolers stress themselves out about, you know, the small details about getting their degree and where they're gonna go and how they're gonna do it, so, yeah. Sweet. Knowledge. As <laughs> knowledge bomb, as hosts of this season, do you, do either of you have any questions regarding, you know, uh, Callie's experience here or anything that is relevant? Since what's here, I, I, I have a big question. What's it like, like outside of the, like you've graduated high school, you've moved on, you you're like, oh, I don't have to go to high school anymore. Like what what was that like being like I'm outside of the bubble now? Like you're just like I can do whatever I want to. Was that like a scary experience or a, or a freeing? Like, how did that feel? It's Everyone. awesome. Okay. Um, there is, it's definitely a bubble. I think that's exactly the way that I would phrase it. Public school, especially high school, is a bubble. And you're hanging out with like all the same people that you've known since elementary school and you can never avoid seeing them. And when you get out of high school, you realize that's not real life, like at yeah. all. People don't act the way they do in high school. In high school, everyone has these like big opinions on you and people like either love you or they hate you. And there's always drama or something. It's not like that in the real world. Very rarely does anything like that ever happen. Um, and that's awesome. It's very freeing to be like, wow, nobody actually cares what I'm doing right now because we're not in high school. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find that when people do act like that, you say, oh, wow, okay, well, they're acting like they're in high school and we're grown, so. Um, but also, yeah, the bubble is crazy. When you get out, you get to do whatever you want, especially like if you have a mode of transportation, like a car. You just go wherever. Yeah, I've noticed that I can just do whatever I want. I have agency, which is very strange. Yeah. Um, what do you mean I can drive to Tennessee when I, if I want to? Like go to I the can, beach. Exactly, I can go to the beach. I can hang out with my friends. I'll ask my mom, I'll be like, hey, you mind if I go here? She's like, I don't care what you do. Like, mm -hmm. you're grown. Go do what you want. You did it. You graduated high school. So it's exciting. And it's a little scary. You know, there are times where you're like, I really wish someone would just give you direction and tell me what to do right now. Um, but no, it's good. You're going to like it, I promise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I live here now, but I did live in Boston. Yeah. Oh, okay. How was Boston? I've been wanting. I've been thinking. Well, I've been thinking about moving there when I get out of high school. Yeah. So do they well, have good bagels. I didn't have any bagels when I was up there. Oh, that's, that's surprising. That's, that's I mean, terrible. As, as, as someone from Massachusetts, I can I can vouch for our bagels at least. Look, look. I know that that's like the one big thing from Boston. It's like, hey, boss man, let me get some bagels. I thought that was a New York thing. Yeah, it, it is also, also a New York thing. It's also though. Boston, right? That's a Boston thing. I guess so. More New York, but it's I'll take Boston. Alex's word on the bagels are good. Yeah, yeah. they are good. Jules is on a drink. I picture Boston in my head as New York, but like a bit less extreme. Yeah. When I got to Boston, I said to my parents that I think that Boston is exactly like what everyone imagines New York is like. Like, oh, mm. everyone knows each other, and there's this city, and there's this and that's like what you think New York is in reality New York is like awful and there's traffic and there's too many people but Boston is beautiful it's one of the prettiest places I've ever been um, the fall is magnificent it lasts for weeks there's beautiful leaves the only thing I don't like about Boston is the food the food is a travesty um, <laughs> Everything oh, that I oh, ate. Travesty. Bad. 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 Oh, bad. Okay. <laughs> Everything I ate in Boston was probably bad. There was like one place I really liked. It was called Sweet Rice. Shout out to you, Sweet Rice. Just digging the knife into Alex's chest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although, although there, there's a slight caveat that you were in um, more towards South Boston. Yeah, I was in Brookline. Yeah, you were in Brookline, and Brooklyn. I grew up uh, on the North Shore, or. Uh, as I'm sure that you've probably heard it, um, and for certain people that that like when um, I, I talk stuff in a yeah, Bostonian accent, bust out you know, the accent. You know, hi, Brandy. Um, <laughs> uh, growing up in the North Shore. Um, yeah, uh, North Shore. Um, you know, that's, that's, about. that's a that's a different kind of um, I guess culinary background. But yeah, no. I, South Boston, like by Brookline and Quincy and, and stuff like that, that's where I spent the least amount of time. Okay. So now I know next time I go back home. Don't eat there. To, don't, to <laughs> not eat there. I like to say it's Southern cuisine versus Yankee food. 
Ooh. In parentheses. Uh, before filming, uh, we heard the tragedy of you trying to have Should sweet, I, yeah, sweet tea. Them? Okay, so the first day that I was in Boston, we had just got there. I took a shower, got clean. After a long road trip, we road tripped all the way up there, so it took a long time. Um, and we went How long through, was the drive? Uh, 20 hours. Oh. Just or really, so. We did yeah. it over two Reef. days, though. Okay. So we sat down nice. in this Italian restaurant, and... I was not expecting the way that people act. Everyone said they don't have Southern manners, but I did not know this is how it was going to be. I sat down and I said, oh, could I please get um, a glass of sweet tea? She goes, oh, no, we don't have that here. Immediately, I burst into tears, <laughs> streaming down my face. I'm like looking at my mom. I'm like, I can't believe this is not going to work. And I just, this is not going to, I can't believe <laughs> and uh, she, I think we all kind of knew in that moment that it wasn't going to last very long. Uh, you know, I can't do it. I love sweet tea. I love the South. And it was, that was bad. There were lots of moments like that. Sweet <laughs> sweet tea up north, the, way, the best way I can describe it is Lipton if you add sugar. They said you can have uh, hot tea yeah. with a cup of ice, or you can have... Uh, or you can have unsweet tea, and I can give you Splenda packets. And yeah. I said, I'll take a Coke. Also, but then they said, we don't have that. We I was going to say, it's Pepsi products yeah. up there, yeah. right? It is, yeah, it is yeah. Okay. Products. Like, that's, yeah. That's my follow-up question. Yeah. It's going to be like... No, try to find a Dr. Pepper up in Boston. It's impossible. It is difficult. Yeah. What looked... do you guys have, like, Tab or something? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not stepping into no. the 80s and the 90s. <laughs> it might have been. In Massachusetts. Yeah, uh, yeah to be fair, the buildings. Across yeah. the threshold, I'll go eat, back, like, 30 years. I'll, like, live anywhere if they have a good Thai place. They, do, they have great Asian food. They so do. anything like that, sushi, uh, Chinese food, Thai food, go I for it. I love getting great. the tonkatsu ramen and like a Thai tea. Jules is sold. If you do move up there, a great place called Noodle Barn that I think that you would die for. Noodle Barn! C Isn't C it cute? Central Boston has a, has a good collection of like Cambodian and Thai and Vietnamese places. I it's love really good. Asian food. Yeah. There's so many things that happened up in Boston. I also witnessed a robbery. Uh, I walked out of an establishment and I was getting coffee with my friend Remy. Shout out to you, Remy. I love you and miss you. Um, <laughs> I walked out of the establishment and there was just a guy in a ski mask hustling a guy on a motorbike in front of a bank. Give me your money. Remy was like, stop staring. Like, you were going to get us killed right now. You're just staring at these people. I was like, okay. Walked around the corner, called the police. What the heck? That doesn't happen here. We just old school Average money Wednesday heist evening in, in Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't even scary. I was just like, what is going on? This guy didn't, guy on the bike looked like this happens every day. He was just arguing with him. He was like, oh, no, I don't really actually feel like I'm going to do that today. No. My friend, what is going on? This guy has uh, a weapon. Here, here's here's, here's, a, up, here's uh, a prompt no. for you, Callie. Okay. Um, how often, and I'm hoping that it's often, how often were you on, and what is the wildest story that you have while being on the tee? <sighs> this is great content! Um, I love the, not knowing what the, 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 uh, the you guessing it's a subway? The Massachusetts Bay uh, Trans uh, Transit Authority, or the oh. M MBTA, otherwise known as the T, is the um, subway system and also the bus system in Massachusetts, um, okay. or at, in, in the Metro Boston area. So how often were you on the T, and what's the wildest story that, that, uh, that you've seen on the T? Okay, I hate to disappoint. I was actually mm -hmm. only on the T one time because we actually walked everywhere That's for the enough, most part. Though. However, <laughs> That's sustainable. the one story that I have from the T is very funny and the people that I know went on the T a lot and I will also provide you one of their stories. Great. Um, to Alex is rubbing that. his hands yeah. together. He's getting all ready. <laughs> the the, the T is a magical place. So the one time I went on the T, we actually did like the bus. We didn't go on like the actual okay. trip. On the bus, and we were going from my school to a place called Jamaica Plain, which was literally like down the street. Five minute ride, by the way. We just didn't feel like walking Jamaica that day. Jamaica Plain. Yes, Jamaica Plain <laughs> is in, uh, I want to say Southwest Boston. We Plain, like, is it a chain restaurant or is it like a restaurant? City. No, it's, oh. it's, 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 Plain, like, it's P similar -I to what you would call a borough. Okay. Okay, because as you said that, I was like, that's a weird restaurant name. And I no. feel so bad now. Oh, bad jeez. Jamaica just... Plain is essentially a, a borough or a neighborhood okay. in Southwest Boston. That's fine. All right. All right. Yeah. So okay. I sit down, me and my friend Remy, and uh, she's very prominent in every story that I tell because she was always there. Um, we were sitting next to each other. I can't explain why this happened, how this happened, or like what, what like why this, I just can't explain it to you. But some guy, picked up the like to-go sushi he had in his container, threw it 
at the guy across the aisle from him. That was it. Guy said, what are you doing? What? He said, what, what are you he doing? said, why did you look at me like that? <laughs> and then we got off the bus. And that was the end of it. He just Your accent isn't that, that far off. <laughs> like, yeah. either. Not a super crazy story, but the only time I rode the T, and that's when I probably decided, you know, never again. It's probably not the best place for a small woman to be. <laughs> um, so He throws it and it hits the ground. Does she just leave it there? Like, it's just on yeah, the ground. Yeah, that was it. Did he hit the guy or did it hit, like, the window? Like, he did, did he oh, hit, hit the guy. Hit okay, good. It hit him, like, here. Like, in this. Oh, he got, like, no. Like, like, well, like, <laughs> you're going to throw something at someone. You want it to hit them. I was wondering, like, he just kind of looked down at it on the ground. Like, what are you oh, doing? Like, what are you I doing? Some, I hope someone picks that up. Oh, jeez. And then uh, one time, uh, my friends told me a story about how they got on the tee and they, they, um, they started going on, like, the bus and they stopped at a stop sign. And here comes a car, wrong direction down the road, trying to go in a wrong way. But he starts honking. The guy gets out of his car. Dude, what are you doing here? He's like, he's like, the bus driver goes, stop honking at me. Stop it right now. Turn around. Go the other way. They're like screaming at each other. And they say it lasted like five minutes. Honking, yelling at each other. So the guy just gets back in his car. Turns around, just drives off. That was it. Like uh, that was just a normal thing that happened on a Tuesday. I didn't get the chance to tell you this story because it was uh, after you guys got out from, um, it was actually when I went to Boston when you guys were graduating that uh, Brady and I, hello again. Hi, Brady. Um, we were going to Boston Calling in Cambridge and uh, this is this is my favorite story from the entire trip that I was there. We are walking. A guy is actively not even crossing the street, but like at a, a you know an intersection, and traffic is so congested in Cambridge because there's a festival going on, and so a car is trying to turn left, and the pedestrian who again is not involved in the situation. He is not even in the intersection where that car is going. And he's just like, the green's light guys, we gotta keep moving, like, come on, let's go. And it, it, it's the one of the most entertaining and one of the <laughs> most like incredibly Bostonian things to do, to be involved in a situation where you have no right to be involved and <laughs> criticize someone's ability to move traffic along. This guy along. can't drive. Yeah. <laughs> What's the deal? It's, it's, it's incredible. incredible. You just probably exactly, help exactly. Exactly. It's incredible. Uh, uh, how long do you think like a sickly Victorian child could go not across? Long. <laughs> not long. Without like exploding. Peeling over. I have Peeling a theory over. about that. So like Boston's actually so old. The houses there are insanely old. Like like American Revolution type nonsense, right? Yep. And uh -huh. so I have this theory that actually it's always been like that and that everyone's just always acted like that since like the dawn of, of Boston time. Everyone the same. And so I Victorian. think actually that the Victorian children would if they're be, from Boston. they'd be okay. If they were from Boston. If they're from yeah. Boston. If they're from anywhere else, they would probably have be like they go to cardiac arrest. But, but I yeah. so if Bostonian from, Victorian children. So like from Victoria. If you if you say like if you get like Pre, there's no pre Boston. It Wait. just well, Boston is actually pre Victorian. Yes, because because Boston um, we kind of made that out of out of the kind of our thing out of the uh, very fun amount of knowledge I know about the Massachusetts uh, history. Uh, the city of Boston was established in 1630, so it is ancient oh. beyond ancient. Off the top of his head, that was yeah, crazy. Yeah, off the top of my head. <laughs> I know a lot about my home state. It's so good um, that all that architecture was like preserved. Yeah, I don't think I lived in a house um, while I lived in Massachusetts that predated uh, or that postdated, I guess you could say, 1920. Oh my God! While, oh, um, old all houses. Um, I like... lived in Lynn and, and Chelsea, and um, the two buildings that I lived—no, three actually, three buildings that I lived in. Um, <laughs> the three houses that I lived in were, I think before 1930, 1920, and there was one of them, I think it was the one in Lynn, that was built in like 1903. So That's you were just, crazy. you were just like a little kid rocking with like no air conditioning. Were you haunted? Uh, Haunt uh, eight, ghosts. Eight, uh window units. Yeah, 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 but I'm oh saying you get, you get like mm -hmm. no central air. No. No central like, air, ghosts. Three <laughs> stories tall and each story would have a, a different family. Which one that. did you get? Um, 
The third one's the most fun. Let's see, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember if it was second, second, third, or third, second, third. But you you were the third at one point. You got the good At least once. I think I was, uh, I think we lived on the attic? Were they like, yeah. Did no. They home alone you? No, but my brother and I um, shared a bedroom that was actually. See, uh, see, no, hold uh, on. A, he a, never a told closet. us he has siblings. This is this is new information. You I never, have two siblings. Okay. You've never told us this. Okay, so I got they, here, and together. apparently these two know nothing about Alex Marchante. He just, they don't know anything about him. I thought I know everything about Marchant. <laughs> You know that that's not true. <laughs> this is just not. When Dylan and I were here, we true. knew almost everything about this man because we were all very close and we spent a lot of time together. So, you know, we just kind of naturally knew a lot about each other. I get here, they're like, wait, what? You can't just be like, you know, I, I, I went out, I went to the grocery store, or just give me, give me, give me something. Give me, do you have pets? No, no not currently. Okay, that's what I, 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 that's I, I plan on getting a cat. See, there we go. Uh, See, there we, I, I would have known that. Within the next two months. That's, he well, didn't tell us the company credit card. Name the cat Callie. He didn't Amen. tell us if it's Calico. <laughs> that'd be cool, actually. That'd work out really well because Calico cats. Cal, uh, you know. Callie. Have you seen the Disney Junior show Share Callie's Wild Wild West? It's a Calico cat. Oh my! I do remember that. I actually own that the Calico. That's what been I actually a long own time. a Calico cat, and so oh. the fact that there's a show called that and I own a Calico cat is very funny. Her name is like, Nalu. Shout out to you, Nalu. I love you. Calico, Calicos and Monster Hunter are called Palicos. Aww. Yes. Yes. All right, all right. right. Nerds, yeah. nerd, nerd. And alert. you, and you Pokemon wonder why player. I don't tell you anything. Uh, Alex, by, by Alex, the way, I'm, I'm, playfully uh, mean. I'm I'm hoping that my cat in the next two months is going to be named Toast. And Toast. It's going to be an orange or brown cat. That's outstanding. Don't get an orange yeah. one because it'd be orange, orange cats are crazy. Yeah, you're going to get a cat with I'm, and I hate to tell you this, but if it gets diagnosed with orange, that's Ooh. not I'm an good. orange cat. Her name is Gilgamesh, and she's probably the most insane creature I've ever met in my life. My friend, well, so I would I would welcome that energy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, before we go on to our next segment and probably by now talk uh, district and pop culture updates, uh, we would like to thank Callie for being here. Thank you. Um, for for joining us for this uh, part of Women's History Month, our, our episode on Women's History Month. Um, yeah, Callie. Even if it's just for a conversation, it's always a delight. Uh, so thank you, Callie, for being here. Yay, go women! Go women! Go women. Go women. Yay! <laughs> We'll be right back to the show, but first let's get into our district updates in this episode as part of our Can't Miss Minutes. March is Apply to College Month in Georgia, and dozens of colleges and universities across the state are waiving their application fees as part of a partnership between the Georgia Student Finance Commission, University System of Georgia, Technical College System of Georgia, and several private colleges and universities. Go to bit.ly slash apply to college month GA for the full list of schools participating. In other news, March is also National Youth Art Month, celebrating the importance of art education and encouraging the creative expression of young people. CCSE is proud to present two showcases in town this month, spotlighting the work of our many talented students. The annual CCSD Youth Art Month exhibition at the University of Georgia Lamar Dodd School of Art will be on display, and we invite you to join us from 1 to 3 p.m. on Sunday, March 24th for a community reception at the school located at 270 River Road in Athens. In addition, the second annual high school art showcase at the Athens Institute for Contemporary Art will be on display from March 21st to the 27th, and a reception is scheduled for Saturday, March 23rd from 5 to 7 p.m at the Athica studio located at 675 Pulaski Street, Suite 1200. And finally, the window for parents and teachers to declare their candidacy for their school's local school governance team, or LSGT, is now open. Individuals interested in serving a two-year term from July 2024 through June 2026 should make their declarations in advance of next month's elections. Go to our website at clark.k12.ga.us for more information. And now let's turn it over to Owen and Jules for some pop culture updates and some more Studio 595. And now for something actually important. Have you heard of a game called Fallout? There's lots of different ones. There's the first and the second and New Vegas and Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. There's lots of different games, but Coming out soon, April 12th, 
is the Fallout TV show on Amazon Prime, which I am very personally excited about because they've done a very faithful adaptation to the games, but it's also canon to the universe, which I'm also very excited about. All episodes will be releasing on the 12th, so get ready to binge, and hopefully it'll be good. Do you love creatures, critters, and creepy crawlies like me? If so, you might be hyped about this new project at University of Texas at Arlington, aiming to make over 20,000 topography slash CT scans of vertebrates available to the public. This is going to be good for, for weirdos like me who want to like take a look inside of all the, all the little critters we got running around. Because some of them are weird. One of my favorite is the, is the echidna. We'll put a, a, a vertebrate, a, a little CT scan of, a, of him right now. He's so weird. You know what else is weird about him? He has his own TV show coming out in April, Knuckles. I like the Sonic 2 movie and I like Knuckles in the Sonic 2 movie, so pretty excited about that. So my story also gives us an, a chance to do a March 2024 roundup of our happenings in our 2024 bingo game. Further updates include Jules being right about a new Earth-like planet existing, or at least being discovered, and Haiti becoming relevant. Unfortunately, that is a uh, much bleaker story than the Earth-like planet. Um, as well as Owen predicting that a band from the 70s or 80s would reunite, and that being the Doobie Brothers who announced that they would be um, reforming and doing a new tour and seemingly a new album. Uh, as well as interactive ads during the Super Bowl and the Minecraft movie being announced, which uh, for everyone interested on me just glossing over that piece, um, it'll come out April of next year, in case if you're interested. For my side of the bingo game, uh, I was correct in saying that AI would be getting sued as NVIDIA is currently um, being sued for copyright infringement for their uh, AI platform. But that's not the story that I'm here to talk about today. Uh, and it is the other point that I am getting in our bingo game, which is to predict a pseudo medical condition that uh, would gain traction on social media that everyone would say that they have. Um, and so we turn to, of course, um, the greatest platform for trustworthy ideas and life advice, TikTok. Um, as an Atlanta Journal-Constitution article highlights, a TikTok user posted a video describing her symptoms of lightheadedness, nausea, and faintness, saying, all of these symptoms are not adding up to me. Others joined in the conversation, and by others, I naturally mean 1.7 million likes, 53,000 comments, and 124,000 uh, shares. As the AJC's Ebony Williams writes, in the comment section, users complained about their nose and throat hurting for days, while others mention being dizzy, weak, tired, and experiencing body aches. This soon was turned into a mystery illness in the TikTok community, uh, while medical experts chimed in with an actual explanation, um, and I'm sure that many of you are going, you know, could be pointing to one of many things, and thankfully, a referenced uh, Healthline piece within the AJC article cites Dr. Sarah Bonza um, describing the symptoms shared by TikTok users as being very common in viral illnesses, such as COVID-19, uh, the flu, and the common cold. Dr. Bonza also described this as not a new virus, but simply a new version of the old virus. I'll be honest, I felt pretty comfortable with this prediction, as the article also cites a survey stating that one-third of Gen Z and four out of every nine of members of uh, Gen Z uh, consult TikTok or YouTube respectively before seeing a doctor. And as someone who is in the in-between years of Gen Z and Millennial, uh, I would just say go to a doctor, get expert advice, that's all. I am the English teacher at the Career Academy. Uh, I've been here since January 2019. Um, and right before I came back to teaching in the high school classroom, I taught women's studies at the University of Georgia for three years. It was just over 100 years ago when the first women were allowed to vote, right, in 1920. Um, and so that's obviously in the last 100 years something that we just celebrated 
the 100 year anniversary of that. Uh, the only issue, right, is when we talk about big events, a lot of times uh, there's a lot of intersectionality within those events that while it helped women maybe on a partial scale, it didn't necessarily have the same impact for all women. So while in 1920 white women, white privileged women got the right to vote, not everybody had that ability. And so um, I do think there have been a lot of progresses that have happened over the last 100 years, um, but we're sometimes slow to start. Like we start the progress for like a privileged group of women and then it takes a second for everything else to start um, kind of following in that order. So that's kind of my first thought with that question. But I think that just having uh, social media at our fingertips, right, um, through cell phones, through computers, through whatnot, we just have a lot more voices that we get to hear from in more recent years, even in my adulthood, right, when I forgot my first cell phone to now, it's 100% different um, with how much you have access to, how many people you get to hear from, the platforms people get to have via social media and whatnot. And so I think to me, one of the biggest influences over the last recent movements has been just giving a platform for people to speak from all kinds of racial, LGBTQIA, class, just all kinds of intersectional perspectives. And I think that that's been the most important influence in recent years. I feel like with a lot of social justice issues, whether it's specific to women's studies or anything else, you have a lot of like one step forward, two step back situations happening. So I do think that there's been a ton of progress in recent years, uh, but one of my favorite uh, writers in recent years, Roxanne Gay, said, people keep telling me, but it's so much better, but it's so much better. And she's like, cool, but better doesn't always mean good. And I think that that quote really resonates with me as far as some of the progresses we've made. Yes, things are better, but things aren't exactly good for everybody. And to me, that real progress will show when things are good and healthy and, you know, just for everybody. The biggest thing for me would be safety is still a concern for a lot of women, but I think people in general but something when I taught women's studies that a lot of young women wrote about in their reflections was how unsafe they felt. I think too, um, in the workforce, there is some disenfranchisement, right? The pay gap still exists. Are there still disparities? Of course there are, but I think a lot of it starts with just how we teach young men, young women how to be, not in a gendered way, but just like how to be empathetic and good. Period. I think um, young people especially, um, there's a lot of challenges with social media. While it's beautiful in that it unites people from all over the world, um, no matter what language you speak, where you're from, you have access to information. I think that's wonderful. But on the flip side of that, there's been a lot of disparaging that happens over social media. I know like fights even in high school sometimes start online, right, and then they bring it to the school. Um, self-esteem issues can be brought online and I think part of that is the expectations we have of young people and young people who want to be whatever their goal is um, in the future looking up to uh, maybe not always the best role models are who gets the most airtime on television or on Spotify or on wherever so I do think sometimes the positivity of what young people have access to um, gets outshined by the negativity of like bullying online or bad messages online. While like people's identities matter and you know they're a huge part of who we are, um, that expression sometimes is socialized and a lot of research shows that young women are socialized out of science and math and towards like the humanities and young men are socialized more towards the hard sciences, right, versus soft sciences. And so something I've seen an improvement in is more women in STEM and more women in those science and math programs. Um, but I still, it's like a very slow growth. Like when you look at just the makeup of classes as you're in elementary school, you see equal amounts of young men and women loving their science, loving their uh, history, you know, loving all the classes. And then you go to middle school and you start seeing that like 
change a little bit. And by high school, once you start seeing your AP uh, math and science classes, you just, for whatever reason, you have more women going into more um, service-oriented positions versus like hard sciences. There's so many people that have inspired me personally, like historical figures or just like everyday people that are huge inspirations to me. Um, that as soon as I, I'm asked to come up with a name, my mind's like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, um, but something, uh, someone who is a historical figure that still, uh, still is around and, and inspired me is Alice Walker because she's very um, liberatory minded, like has a very social justice mindset in everything, and everything, and I believe she made some hard decisions and showed that sometimes those hard decisions pay off uh, in movements when change needs to happen. So definitely her. Um, but there's just so many, I mean like, it's, it depends on the situation, who I would have been inspired by. So she's just someone who immediately came to mind. Um, a huge fan of Bell Hooks and her work. Um, I think as a poet myself, kind of having poets who were also, are writers who are also activists, are a lot of people who spoke to me, but uh, even here in town, like Dr. Lakeisha Gant, who was our president, right, of the board, um, I think is very inspirational, and I feel like seeing someone with that much power use power in the local community of Athens for good um, was very inspirational as a teacher in this community, because sometimes you don't always see Weirdly enough, right, you'd always see community members from the community fighting for the community in the community. And I don't know if that makes sense, but it feels like sometimes everybody always focuses on like big, like Georgia issues or big United States issues. And I really get inspired by the people who are grassroots, like right here in Athens, fighting for Athens. Thank you for listening to this episode of Studio 595. We have a very special episode coming up in a couple weeks from now. Uh, if many of you, um, if any of you were l tuning in last season, you may know, given the time of year where we're headed. Uh, I, and, don't, I don't know what you're and, referring to. Uh, it's going to be fun. So we will not be posting on a Friday for our next episode. We'll be posting on the Monday during spring break, which if you look at the date, that'll tell you all you need to know. So uh, until then, please follow us on all of our social media channels. Please. please tune in to our Spotify for our special Women's History Month playlist as well. We have been doing that for a couple weeks, but we are ready to publish it. So if you look now on our Spotify, it may actually be already posted. Uh, and so you have music from um, female musicians as well as uh, at musical acts that are led by women. So please go ahead and enjoy that. And until then, until... Uh, about 18 days from now we will be seeing you then so please be on the lookout for that and until then i have been producer alex i'm jules and i'm owen and this has been studio, studio 595, 595.